Life is not always predictable. We don't anticipate being up against the ropes. But the one who moves mountains always starts by carrying small stones, one at a time, for however long it takes. Just stay focused on what's ahead. Persist in spite of all the obstacles. Your strength lies in your tenacity, in your gutsy resilience. The purpose of winning is far more than just the prize. It's conquering the journey. Listen to the voice of the author. That's what hope sounds like. The voice of encouragement must become like a raging fire. Yes, you may fall, but you will get back up. Take heart. Fix your weary eyes on him. Let his power within you surge like lightning. Get up. Get up. Get up. I want to welcome you all to this amazing new series. Wherever you're looking in from, do you know what? God sees you. Every location, you're so welcome. If you're sat in front of the TV, maybe you're a single mum at home looking after your baby. I want to say God has a word for you. Doesn't matter where you are, who you are, everyone matters to God. And do you know what? He has a special message for you. So we're going to look at the Bible as we look at this new uh, series called In the Ring. In the Ring, it really is all about being in the ring. It's about boxing, it's about sort of getting in the ring and winning the prize. And we chose this series because I think it just describes so much about, you know, living life. If you're not in the ring right now, you've probably been in the ring or you're about to go in the ring. Getting in the ring is when you've got to fight for things. And that could be fighting for a relationship, it could be fighting for your health, it could be fighting for someone else, uh, it could be fighting for your finances. There's so many things that come into our lives that we need to fight for. And so the Bible talks a lot about that. And the Bible refers to us running the race to win the prize. It refers to the fact that we don't want to just live life aimlessly, but with a vision and a plan. And the way I'd like to sort of start this first part of the series off is actually all to do with having a dream because if you haven't got a dream you're probably not going to get in the ring because you're not going to want to fight for it and you know what the bigger the dream the bigger the vision for your life and so as I speak to you today I, I want us to look at the idea of having a dream I also want to take a moment to dedicate this message to a very close friend of mine Pastor Perry Noble uh, because I, I just know that this message about being a dreamer, for me, is all about his life. And I want to dedicate it to him. And the title of this message is Never Quit. Never quit. Don't give up. When you've got the dream, go after the dream. God will come through for you. So everything that we do begins with a dream. And no matter how small it is, even Freedom Church, because we're sat in locations around the world right now. Do you know what? It started with a dream when we had a few people, when we just had a tambourine, when we were just in a place where we didn't have what looked like much. But we got in the ring to contend for the promise. And we got in the ring to contend for the lives that would come. And now all over the world we have locations, but it started with a dream. And if you've got a dream, you've got to get in the ring. So that's what this is all about. And I'm so excited to bring this to you because I want to encourage you because some of you perhaps feel like giving up. Some of you want to quit, but I'm saying the dream, the dream is great, but you've got to go and pursue the dream. And that's where we are. So I'm going to use from the Bible in Genesis, we're going to take a look at Joseph, because when I talk about dreamers, he was the greatest like dreamer. Uh, you know, he had his multicolored coat. Uh, they made musicals about him. In fact, I was even Joseph as a young boy. My dad made me be in a musical and I had to stand behind the bars and actually be Joseph and sing the songs and uh, have the, the old ladies crying on the front row. Uh, Joseph, he was a dreamer. He was someone who 
had dreams of what could be. He didn't always understand it, but he was a dreamer. It was like he had dreams of something greater. And I, I want to encourage all our you know, parents out there, we need to encourage our children to be dreamers, not to squash dreams and say, do you know what, you're being silly now. We need to encourage them to have dreams because there's something that God puts in every one of us that wants to break out of just what we see and a dream for bigger things. And so Joseph was this young man, 17 years old. We're going to pick up the story. 17 years old he is, and we see him with his brothers. He's got a load of brothers, and uh, all, they're all his big brothers. They're out in the field, and he goes to join them, but he's not popular. First of all, his father, Jacob, favors him. But secondly, he just has these dreams, and he's actually quite naive about the dreams. He just knows that he's got some big dreams, doesn't really know what they mean. So we're going to take a look here at uh, Genesis 37, verse 6 to 8. This is what it says. He said to them, Joseph, listen to this dream I had. So imagine him, he's got all his brothers there, they've been farming with the sheep, and he says, oh, I've, had, I've had a dream, I've had another dream, listen to it. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field when suddenly my sheaf, it rose and stood upright while your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. Now that's not going to go down with a bunch of brothers. It's like, are you saying that your sheath is bigger than ours and we're all going to get around you? His brothers said to him, do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he had said. I mean, in one way, can you blame them? Can you, can you imagine being one of those brothers? It's thinking... Here he comes, here's the dreamer, and he's got a dream, and it's all about us bowing down to him. Now, in fact, there's a great story behind this, and we're going to see where it goes. Joseph didn't realize what the dream was about, but there was a dream that caused trouble. And my first point I want to share is dreamers are troublemakers. You, you can't sort of have a big dream and keep out of trouble. It's almost like the way it doesn't work. You think in history, the people who had a dream. I had a dream, Martin Luther King. Did he keep out of trouble? Look at his life. Look at what took place. Dreamers, if you're going to see great things happen, you need to be prepared for trouble. And even here, Joseph, you see, he, he, he like had a dream and it was actually about something good. It wasn't about something proud. It was actually about how God was going to use him in the future to save other people. But he caused trouble. People will misunderstand dreamers. People will think, hey, you're arrogant because you're actually stepping out from the crowd and saying, I've got a dream. And I want to encourage you. Whoever I'm speaking to today, you need that encouragement. Say your dream. Sometimes it feels like you're squashed down. Sometimes it feels like, hey, don't be silly. You're too young to think that. Or, you know, you're not qualified to think that. Do you know what? God qualifies you. Do you know what? God is calling dreamers. There's part of the DNA of God that is a dreamer. Think of creation. He's a dreamer. And in that way, like, think of the incredible when you see, like, the, the color of creation and trees and birds and the man. He's a dreamer. Because of that, the DNA of God is within us because he made us within his, inimi his image. And in his image, we're dreamers. God called us to be dreamers, that we dream and that we see amazing things happen. But we've got to realize that it's going to attract trouble. We've got to realize that where doubts start with a thought, dreams start with courage and faith. And I'll tell you what, when you start getting dreams and you start getting a, a, an idea, and it's built with courage and faith, you never know what's going to happen. I also want to share this next scripture, and this is, this is like how the story unfolds. They're very upset, so do you know what happens after this? They don't just walk away and say, hey, we're going we're gonna to beat you up, uh, and that's the end of it. They decided to kill him. So they're going to kill Joseph, get rid of the dreamer. See, he's caused some trouble. He's gone in there and he's caused some trouble and uh, they just want to finish him. And so this is what takes place in Genesis 37, 17 to 20. So Joseph went after his brothers, found them near Dothan, but they saw him in the distance and before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. 
they weren't just going to, they're like fed up with him now. They're not going to just like, uh, you know, have an argument. Their hatred has turned to want to kill him. Here comes that dreamer. There's something about when a dreamer stands out from the crowd. A dreamer speaks up from the crowd. Maybe things could be different. They say things that mark them. They said to each other, come now, let's kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns, this big pit in the ground, and say that a ferocious animal devoured him. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. That's their plan. How do you get rid of a dreamer? Put him in a big pit in the ground. Uh, we're going to leave him there and he's going to like die, you know, and that's, that's the end of the dreamer. Uh, they took his coat off, they ripped it up, they covered it in some blood, and then they took it back to their father and said, hey, this is what happened to your son. He's been ripped apart by a ferocious animal. End of the story. But the dreamer didn't finish there. This is what they planned, but do you know what? It didn't finish there. Dreamers never quit. Even when Joseph was in the pit, you just imagine the feeling, I must be the hated, most hated brother alive. I'm in the pit. I'm sort of being uh, rejected, abandoned. Um, I'm sort of in this place. It's all over. But Joseph, I believe in this moment, didn't quit. He didn't quit. He ends up being sold into slavery and he gets trafficked to Egypt as a slave. And this is like the journey that he goes on. But you know what? He didn't quit. He didn't quit. You know, when you get in the ring, you've got to be ready to fight for your life. When you get in the ring, you've got to be ready to fight. You can't, you can't expect someone else to fight for you, every one of us. We need to know what it is to be determined to have like a fight within us, to say, I'm going to fight through and I will not give up. Do you know, as a young, uh, young man, I was about 15, 16 years old, I decided to go to the boxing gym. And uh, I had a friend who said, hey, let's go to the boxing gym. And I had a dream about, yeah, wouldn't it be great being a boxer? And I always fancied getting in the ring. There's just something about getting in the ring and uh, you know, going for it, landing a few. I had a great idea of what, a, what my dreams would be in the ring. But when I turned up, my coach said to me, first of all, you're not gonna get in the ring. And I spent weeks doing this. He said, he handed me a skipping rope. And I had to learn how to skip. I had to learn how to skip, but I'm talking of hundreds of skips where it, like your arms feel like lead and they're so heavy. And then he lay me on the ground and he got this big heavy ball and he used to bounce it off my stomach. And it was to toughen up the stomach muscles. Do you know what, it was weeks before I got in the ring. I wanted to just get in the ring, but there was a preparation before I got in the ring. He was preparing me for determination. And uh, it, anyway, this one day it happened. This one day, because I kept saying, can I get in the ring today? I, I want to get in and have a fight in the ring because that was my dream. And it's like, you know, I just got this idea of being in the ring. So I get in the ring and he says, yeah, today's your day. So I get in and there's this tall lad about my sort of size and he'd been there for a bit longer than me. And I thought, hey, this is a good contest. So we got in, they rang the bell and I came out punching and he was punching me and we were like, one, two, one, two, three. And we were like, you know, fighting away. And then I managed to get a right hook around, took him to the floor. Oh, champion. Do you know what I mean? All of a sudden, I was running up the steps like Rocky with the children running after me. I had the dressing gown on. I was sort of, you know, there thinking, hey, here's the title. I'm the winner. And I, I had all these ideas until someone tapped me on the shoulder. And they pointed to the guy in the corner who was about 10 years older than me. He had a shaved head covered in tattoos. And he looked very, very strong. And they said, this is his brother. He wants to fight you. Oh my goodness, I was thinking, what have I done? I said, uh, can, can I have a break for a minute? He said, no, he's ready to fight you. Just do one round, one minute with him. I found out he was the county champion as well, which means he knew how to fight. The next minute shattered my dreams. The next minute meant that blood came from every area of my face. And I remember sitting in the changing room after thinking, my dream of being a boxer, it just seemed to crash to the floor. Guys, I know I'm speaking to a lot of people. Your dreams seem to crash to the floor. You perhaps went for your dream and you got a beating. Do you know what? Perhaps you went for your dream and you ended up in the pit. Perhaps you ended up in a place where you got 
trafficked into a direction that you thought, this isn't how my dream, I had an idea it's gonna, was going to be so wonderful, but I've ended up in this place, this dark place, this place where I just feel like I got defeated, uh, that I was overwhelmed. Well, I've come today to tell you that it's not over. Don't quit. Do you know Dreamers know how to keep going. Dreamers know what it is to get in the ring and not give up, even when you hit the ground, even when it feels like you lost that round today. There's always another round. It's not over until you quit. So I'm saying today is a day where I want to encourage you to resurrect some of the dreams that you've had because God is a dreamer and God put dreams within his people. And we're here today because God gave some dreams to, to some people, insignificant people that impacted so many significant people. So there's something about being a fighter and not giving up. Let's go back to Joseph. He gets trafficked. He ends up in uh, being sold into Potiphar's house, who is like a, an official of Pharaoh. He's like in the royal household. So he's, he's still a slave, but he's ended up in this incredible place. So one minute he's in defeat in the pit, then he's in slavery. Now it almost feels like things are going pretty well. He's moved from the uh, sheep uh, into the, the, like the palace area. It's like something that looked bad, seems to have almost progressed to something like an opportunity. And here is Joseph, and he uh, sees favor. He sees sort of things happen in his life, and it says that this man was blessed because of Joseph. But then also, he was very popular with Potiphar's wife. And Potiphar took a fancy to him and thought, hey, I like that young man. He was like in his early 20s, and she thought, hey, you know, I like, I like the, the look of him. And so she tried it on with him and she grabbed him and she wanted to go to bed with him. And Joseph, even in this situation, see, another test comes. The test of being rejected, the test of being in the pit. Now he's seen an element of success, but immediately he's cast into the situation of temptation. He could so easily have sacrificed his dreams that day in giving way to lust. But instead it says he runs. Do you know what? Sometimes you've got to run from the thing that wants to crash your dream. Sometimes you've got to run from the very thing that wants to rob your dream. For the sake of a moment, uh, a moment of responding to lust, you, he could have perhaps uh, been tempted by that pleasure, that, that sort of temptation could have drawn him in. But he said, no, the dream is far too great. What is to come is far too great. And so he runs away and part of his wife grabs him and pulls his cloak off. And, uh, and then when her husband comes home, she says, he tried to rape me. Joseph tried to rape me. Can you believe it? The injustice. He's running away. And this is another test for him, the test of injustice, the test where, you know, he's accused of rape. And so he's put in prison into the royal prison. Not just for a little while, but he's put in prison and they basically forget him. Maybe today you're thinking, has God forgot me? Maybe you're sat at home watching this and you're thinking, has God forgot me? I want to resurrect the dream that he put in you, that it's not over. You need to get back up. You need to move something. If you feel on the floor, it's not over. If you're living and you're breathing and your heart is pumping, God hasn't finished with you yet, but you need to get up and be the fighter that he called you to be. You need to get in the ring and start realizing that today and what you do today counts. So here he is, Joseph is in prison. Winston Churchill said, if you're going through hell, just keep going, but don't stop. Just keep going. Keep going because you're going to come through. God is with you. You're going to come through. The other thing is don't form a conclusion on any given day. Some days you lost the round. Some days things didn't go to plan. But it is amazing how when you commit your way to God and you use courage and faith with your dream, even what looks like a bad day can fire you into a place of direction for your future. I'm going to show you this picture and it's to do with a fight um, that took place between two boxers. And these two boxers, famous boxer, this one here with his back uh, is called Evander Holyfield. And then the guy at the back is called... Tyson. 
and he was really, uh, you know, well known for being a bit of a brute, and he was like in there fighting, and they had this fight where um, Tyson was really sort of struggling in the fight, and while they were like grappling together, you saw him reach over, and what he's doing is he's not, he's not kissing him, he's not giving him a hug, doesn't really happen in the ring, he's biting his ear, he's biting his ear off at the top, at this moment, when they capture it, they, they call it the bite fight. And uh, Tyson is biting his ear because he's just lost control. He's in the ring and he's saying, I'm going to bite my opponent. Now, he came out with a bleeding ear, but Tyson got disqualified from this fight. And Evander, he, he won. He also took away $33 million. And I tell you what, You've got to realize that even in the middle of a fight, even in the middle of your fight, even when things look rough and you're getting your ear bit off, you will find that often the enemy will give you the biggest prize of your life. It was fighting Tyson that gave him the biggest payout and the biggest prize of his life in that ring. He had to go through some blood. He went through some stuff. But you know what? It was his enemy. It wasn't his friend that gave him the biggest payout. It won't be your friend that will give you the biggest prize of your life. It's going to be your enemy. So when you find your, yourself in the prison, when you find yourself in the place where it looks like, oh, you know, I'm in the middle of the fight, realize that God is able to cause the biggest prize of your life to come through what the enemy wants to do. Think about it for a minute. Happened with Jesus. The enemy thought that he had Jesus all done, nailed on that cross. He thought it was all over. He thought he had the victory. It was like the enemy's out. But do you know what was happening at that moment? Jesus was overcoming. Jesus, as he hung on the cross and laid his life down for us all, was overcoming. And when he gave himself up and he was put in the tomb and they closed it with a big stone, they thought it's all over. They thought it was all over. The enemy was there celebrating with all his demons. But then in that darkness of the tomb, there was a movement of Jesus' finger. There was a movement of that body. And we know that when Jesus moved, he rose from the dead. See, the enemy thought that he had it all won. But in the middle of the darkness, Jesus overcame and defeated death and defeated the enemy. That same spirit that's in him is in you. The same spirit that when you're on the floor or you're in the middle of your dark room, in, the, in your, the middle of your prison that appears like prison, God is still able to move. God is able to use what the enemy wanted for harm. He, he's able to use it for good. He's, he's able to bring victory, but you need to get up and you need to fight. You need to get up with courage, with faith, and you need to come after the dream that God placed in you. It's not over. Don't quit. God has a great plan. So we pick up in Genesis 39, verse 22 to 23. It says, the warden of the prison, he's in charge of the royal prison. He put Joseph in charge of all those held in the prison and he was made responsible for all that was down there. Can you believe it? So Joseph, he's the prisoner. He's in charge of the prison. And it even says the warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care. It's like, Joseph's in charge, we got no worries. Oh, he's a prisoner. Yeah, he's got it all. He's in charge of the keys. He's in charge of everything. He's there. Because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. Does it mean he didn't have to go into the pit? Did it mean he didn't have to go into the prison? Even in your prison... God is able to bring success, but you need to keep walking through the prison. You need to keep going through the discouragement because God has a greater plan. All along, he had a greater plan. But the thing I want to just share with you around this is your posture is key to your dream becoming reality. How you posture yourself in the ring, in the fight, is key to your dream becoming reality. See, whenever a fighter fights, they move their body to a place of, of least resistance. So when you're hitting the target, it's smaller. They also prepare themselves. So they, 
they've got a foot in the right place so when they do get hit, they don't fall over. And there's something about not just the posture of ourselves in the fight, the posture of our heart is the most important thing. And when we look at Joseph here, why do you think he became successful? After all this, it's because the posture of his heart. That meant that he was ready to forgive and not be angry. He was ready not to be bitter about his brothers, but he decided that he was going to use this experience to actually make him better. <sighs> to use every fight to make you better. Whatever situation you're going through right now, you're facing some abuse and some stuff. Do you know what? You can choose to be bitter or you can choose to be better through it as you come through that place into the promise, into the dream that God has. See, there's something about the posture of your heart. We can physically do things, but our heart posture is the most important thing. Our heart, a posture of courage and faith. See here, I believe that Joseph was in a place where he wasn't giving up. He was saying, even though this might have been a bad day, I've ended up here and there's injustice around it. I'm going to be a man who helps others. And it says he helped other people in the prison who had dreams. He interpreted them for them. And he said, oh, this is going to happen. That's going to happen. He ends up serving because he has a, an incredible heart, a posture for others, a posture that says, I'm going to get better through this, not bitter. He ends up then going before Pharaoh because he gets remembered and he shares his dream. Um, Pharaoh has this dream and, and Joseph's the only one that can interpret it. And from interpreting it, he sort of ends up saying, who is this guy? He's interpreted my dream and he ends up before Pharaoh, this ruler of the world. And he's been taken right through from the pit into the palace, into the prison, and he ends up before Pharaoh, one of the rulers of the world, interpreting his dream. Dreams take you places where you would never, ever believe. It is incredible. It's incredible what he does. Now, many of us think that this story happened very quickly. Joseph got put in the pit when he was 17 years old. But do you know what? He was in prison till he was 30. So we read this story, he's, in pre he's basically in this story, in the pit, in the prison, 13 years, maybe you could say the best years of his life, he's in prison. And all that time he kept his heart and his posture good because he knew the dream was going to take him through and he was going to end up in a place. He was going to end up in a place that he said, Do you know what, it's all worth it. So that's why he kept fighting through all those years, year after year, saying, God, it's not over. God, I'm not giving up. God, I believe in you. And that's what we see. When he's before Pharaoh, Genesis 41, verse 33 to 34, he shares the dream and Pharaoh's saying, this is amazing. But there's something I just want to, as we finish up, I just want to show you this real important point. Is it says, now... He came in and said, now let Pharaoh look for a discerning and wise man and put him in charge of the land of Egypt. So this is Joseph telling the ruler of the world, I've got some advice for you. I've interpreted your dream, which means there's a famine that is going to come. And if you don't take action, many thousands of people are going to die. But I'm not just going to share the dream. I've got a plan and some advice for you. So now he's advising, he's advising Pharaoh and he says, you need to find the right man, put him in charge of the land. Let Pharaoh appoint commissioners over the land to take a fifth of the harvest of Egypt during the seven years of abundance and basically get ready for what is to come. He has a plan. Do you know what? Don't just be a dreamer. You need to also have a plan. Too many Christians will have a great dream, but they don't plan to do anything about it. If you have a dream without a plan, you've got a car without wheels. You need to have a plan with your dream. When Joseph had waited 13 years to come before Pharaoh, and he could have just interpreted the dream and said, oh, thanks very much, Joseph, off you go. But he knew, his dream was, God, you've called me for greater things. And I'm, I'm here. I haven't just got a dream. I've also got a plan. And again, I'm speaking to so many people now. You have a great dream, but you need a plan. A plan is when you step out on the water. A plan is when you take risk. A plan involves risk. You know, if you have a dream, but there's no risk, you'll probably find there's no plan. 
You need to be able to step out, push doors that open, maybe some doors close, maybe you see some rejection in it, but you know what, through it, you're gonna find the dream come to reality, but it involves a plan. So let's not just be dreamers, let's be like Joseph, the fact that he had a plan. Anyone can dream, but only through risk will dreams become reality. That's the way it works. So then we're gonna finish up the story with the last scripture. He ends up becoming, it says, second in command. Apart from Pharaoh, he was ruling Egypt. So you've got the one that was in the pit, that got accused of rape, that is now, had been in prison, and he's gone from the pit to the palace, and he's ruling. That's what God can do with you. When you keep your posture and your heart right, and when you're willing to get in, you're going to fight for the prize. When you get up off the floor, and here he is now, he's ruling the country, and he's in charge of the food. Well, his brothers who are now from a, they're in another land. They travel all the way to Egypt because they hear that there's food in Egypt and they're starving. So they come and they, they, they come and they bow before him. And then suddenly Joseph says, hey, it's me. And he sort of, they don't realize it, but it's like, what? Our brother is the ruler, the one we put in the pit. Now he's the ruler. And they're afraid and fearful. And they think he's going to punish them. But Joseph's got a, an incredible heart. And he's actually kind to his brothers, the ones that put him in the pit. And this is what he says, Genesis 45, 7 to 8. But God sent me ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So Joseph is saying, oh, guys, don't worry. Guys, don't think that just the bit that you did, that it was all about that. No, God had a great plan and even took the bad intentions of your heart And you know what, when a dream is involved and Joseph was saying, you know, I had a dream and I know that God called me for greater things, but I had to go to the pit to get to the palace, to go through the prison, to speak to Pharaoh, to stand here now and help you with food and help you with salvation, with saving your lives. This is the plan right from the beginning, the sheaths, there he is. He's saying, do you know what? God brought me here. It wasn't you. God plans our life. God plans for the dreams to come reality when we don't quit, but we keep in there and we keep fighting through. And it says, so then it was not you who sent me here, but it was God. He made me father to Pharaoh, Lord of his entire household and ruler of all Egypt. It was God that did it. I'm in this place because God did it. Dreams will give you the staying power to finish. How did Joseph land up here all these years later? He ended up because he kept an incredible posture. He kept a heart of discipline, of saying, I will not allow bitterness to come in. But also his dream gave him him the staying power in prison to stay faithful, to stay hopeful, to stay in the fight. Every time he was down on the floor, he got back up. Every time it felt like he was nearly knocked out, he got back up. He got back up and knew it was not over. Dreams will give you staying power for wherever you are right now. And if you're facing discouragement and difficulty, it's your dream that will see you through. But get a plan with your dream. Know that God is for you. Don't quit. Don't give up. I'm speaking to you right now. I'm speaking to you and I'm calling you out. The dreams that you've had, maybe the things you once believed for, maybe the marriage that broke apart, but God is saying, no, believe again for me. Believe again that I have great things for you. Don't give up, get back up. Your dreams will give you staying power. You're in the ring, but it's your dream that will see you through to contend for the prize, the promise that God has over your life and the life of others. There are even others that are dependent upon your dream. And today I come to encourage you and say, get that dream up, resurrect the dream, get back up, move something, move something, move your fingers, get your hand up, move because Jesus did it for you. He overcame for you and that same power lives in you. That's why I can speak this message to you. That's why I can encourage you. Do not quit, go for the dream. It's not over. God has a great plan for every one of you. In Jesus' name. 
I want to hand over to all of our locations right now. I want to pray that God blesses this word to you as he takes you on this journey, as we see your dreams and your hope and courage come alive. In Jesus' name.